Hello and welcome to my channel. In today's video I am sharing with you my findings of the tests I have done with acrylic paints and cos clay. First of all I want to apologize for the long break. We had a hell of a May as my grandmother and my father-in-law died. It's been a difficult time for us. And then our cat got very sick so we had to deal with that and I just wasn't in the frame of mind to create videos. She's better now in case you're wondering. I always aim to make informative and useful videos for you and that means I take some time to prepare, shoot and edit them. The voiceover is usually the part that takes the longest. Anyway, with this out of the way, let's check out what tests I have done with cosplay. If you have watched my last video about cosplay, you might remember that I tried out the clay and made this cute octopus. It wasn't painted in the video, I painted it after the filming and what happened was that the paint started to feel really sticky. I added some cornstarch to the sculpture and that helped a little to get rid of the stickiness. I asked in the cosplay group on Facebook if they can recommend acrylic paints that don't turn sticky on cosplay. It turned out that people use all sorts of different brands with varying results. So I decided to make a few test pieces using the acrylic paints I already had in my stash. I also ordered extra paint from Jackson's Art, which is their own brand, and I ordered paints from Arteza, as someone in the group mentioned them and I wanted to try them. They are quite cheap too. I also tested alcohol inks, mica powders from Jacquard and Perfect Pearls powders. I also covered one piece with Inca Gold. So let's check these colors out in order. First up I want to show you all the pieces I painted with acrylic paints. I used the grey and the beige clay in case they might react differently. These two were painted with DecoArt Metallic Ice Blue. I bought this paint years ago to paint cat eyes for my sculptures. When I feel these pieces, they do feel quite sticky. These two pieces were painted with high quality Schminke paint in Ultramarine. Unfortunately, the paint made the clay very sticky. These two pieces were painted with a permanent rose by Winsor & Newton. It's the same color I used to mix the purple for the octopus and it is very sticky. The cheaper Galleria version of Winsor & Newton also didn't perform well. I tried this metallic gold by Folk Art and it feels a little bit tacky, but it wasn't too bad. I also tried Folk Art Cobalt Blue and this doesn't feel sticky at all. However, it feels a bit like chalk and would benefit from a coat of varnish. I also tried Jackson's own brand, this is their Burnt Sienna, and it's also not sticky at all and similar to the folk art paint. Arteza was recommended to me in a Facebook group, so I bought their paints and painted these two snakes. The green snake was made with a grey clay which is much firmer and the red one was made with a beige clay. Unfortunately on the day I painted these snakes it was hot and humid and that can influence how the paint and the clay react with each other. I painted a couple of layers on each snake and both the mica green 
and the red turned very sticky. So I don't think I will be using these paints with the coarse clay. However, they are nice and I will be using them for my paintings. With my other clay sculptures I always use a gesso primer before I add the acrylic paint. It makes it easier for the paint to stick on the clay. As it forms the first layer and barrier I decided to try it with cos clay and some of my paints. I painted all of these pieces with the white gesso first on both sides and then I painted two layers of the acrylic paints. These are painted with Winsor Newton's permanent rose and they have remained sticky. For these pieces I used Arteza. The red side is still very sticky and the same is true for the ultramarine blue. The mica blue though is not sticky. I painted the next two pieces with DecoArt metallic blue and they don't feel sticky. I painted the other side with the Folk Arts Metallic Gold, which still feels slightly sticky, so I probably won't use Folk Arts Metallic Colors. I expect the normal Folk Art Colors and Jackson's own colors to work fine on top of a primer, so I didn't make test pieces for them. I wanted to see how alcohol inks Inca gold and mica powders perform and look on this clay. Though inks and powders are super messy to work with, they can give stunning results. For this leaf I used the grey clay and Inca gold and then I varnished it with Dura Clear Gloss by Americana. The varnish works well with this one and didn't turn it into a sticky mess, a problem that can occur with varnish too. What I found when preparing all these pieces was that the grey clay is much firmer and that the beige clay much softer. Both are quite sticky, which is challenging when you use a pasta machine. I noticed that the higher you go with your rollers to make the sheets thinner, that the clay started to create ripples, probably because it sticks to the rollers. To prevent the clay from sticking, a solution could be to use cornstarch or to sandwich the clay in deli paper. Anyway, it took me a few attempts to add the textures, as rolling the clay with the sheet through the pasta machine is not easy. For these two pieces I used alcohol inks and wasn't very careful with applying them. I should have taken my time and maybe used a cotton bud, and make sure I don't use too much. If you use too much, it can affect the clay and it can break. This happened with this piece. I reattached the two parts, but you can see here where the break was. For these pieces I used mica powders by Jacquard and these Perfect Pearls powders. And I varnished them all with vernis. I have been using vernis for years now and so far I have never had a problem with it. Here in the UK it's impossible to buy varathane unless you order it from America on eBay. You can find more about varnishes in my varnish video. Mica powders work really well on coarse clay and look particularly nice on the lighter beige clay, but it needs the varnish to seal the powders in. As you can see, there are plenty of possibilities to add color to your cos clay pieces. However, be aware that some acrylics can react badly with the clay. Personally, I think I will stick with Folk Art matte colors, which are also not very expensive, and Jackson's own brand, 
as these don't result in sticky pieces. I might also use deco art. I think it's best to use a primer before you add the paint. Make sure that each layer is dry before adding another layer and avoid painting in humid and hot weather. However, you might want to make your own test pieces first and see if any acrylics you have in your stash work well. If you can afford to, you might also consider airbrushing your sculptures or use Vallejo paints. These are not cheap paints, but they have been recommended by fellow clayers in a Facebook group. Airbrushing has the advantage of creating an even layer of paint without visible brush strokes. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And if you have any suggestions for sculptures I should try, let me know too. If you liked the video, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and happy claying until next time.